Hi, my name is Jennifer Coleman and I'm from Cedar Creek Church and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to use um, a pad sound on a keyboard um, in a team worship environment. I'm going to jump right into an example in the key of D. Um, this is what I would do, let's say, um, after a sermon. Uh, if you're looking to add some background ambiance um, during um, a prayer, during a response time, before um, the rest of your team is going to join you in a song, um, again, we're assuming that that song is going to be in the key of D. So everything is going to be in the key of D. Um, what you want to stick to um, is the lower half of the keyboard. Um, right here is uh, what will be middle C. Um, with pad work, I, I rarely ever venture to the higher registries. It's all low, um, and the reason for that is you want to not stand out. People want to feel you there, um, but they don't necessarily need to um, hear you move um, in your progression. Um, you want to be a ninja with this. Um, so they, you do want movement behind it, um, but very, very slow. Um, what you're going to see today is probably even a little faster than I would move um, during, during uh, the time I would be playing. So we're going to stick to um, a really simple two note kind of maximum. We might do three at a time, um, but again, subtlety, so we don't want to get over complicated. Um, what I would do um, is start, since we're in the key of D, to kind of establish tonic and everybody's Tummies. Everybody's tummy is going to say, okay, this is where we're at. We're in the key of D. We're going to start with D. We're going to go a fifth above it to the A. Um, I would actually uh, take my volume down or use the D beam, plant my keys, and then slowly just absolutely creep it up to the level that your sound guy you know, has been used to you playing with. So kind of keep, it, keep track of where you're supposed to end up. Um, I even kind of keep it a little bit quieter. Once I can physically hear it in the house, that's about where I start. Stop, because people's ears are going to perk up when they hear that music, and you don't want that. You want them listening to who's talking. You want them listening to God, not necessarily to what you're doing. Um, and so I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. And so we just have that kind of established. And I'm just going to hang out there because I want them to forget about me again. <laughs> so we're hanging out on, on the one and the five, okay, of the, the D chord, all right? The whole D chord would be this, all right? Um, which sounds pretty, but it's, it's too much, all right? We're going to leave off that third. We're just going to stick the two notes. Um, now, if you want to walk down and go to that third because that just kind of makes you feel happy, that's what I do. I just I go to notes that make me feel happy. I can walk down to this four, all right, but I'm going to hang out there for a while and let it rest, let it sink in, okay? Um, you know, if whoever is praying just um, moved on to another point or, or an idea or um, started addressing some, someone else, that's a good time to move. And you can overlap those. All right, now I'm in this happy spot of a very D, this is, this is home, home base right here. Um, any of these, these couplings here, all right? Now we've been here for a while. Uh, what I want to do is move to something a little bit different, but we're never going to venture more than a few notes. Some people would um, go from, you can come back up to the fifth, is what I just did there. Um, some people will say, okay, well, I'm going to want to go to a four chord, so I'm going to go up here. All right, that's stood out. <laughs> we don't want to stand out, so what we want to do is use an inversion, okay? These are the two notes that we were going to go to in order to go to the four chord, okay, which is a G chord, so we're going to do the G and a D. But we've already got the D down here, all right? So we're going to leave him off, so the only guy that needs to move is him. That is subtle. some more movement. I'm going to skip over. I won't skip over more than about a note. I'm going to go up here. Alright, you feel how that moves? But then, naturally, the crowd is like in their, in their subconscious thinking, okay, I really want to go back to home base. 
Now what I'm what I'm playing now is is a four chord with a sustain. Its job um, is to make you want to do this. Go home. All right. Now, so all I have to do is then very very slowly dance up and down. All right. Sometimes you can skip over one note. I never want to skip over more than two, but what does that want me want me to do? Go home. Okay. Let's go back to the D for now. Back to here. All right, and talk about using two notes at a time. Just remember, whatever you do, do so, and then hang out and let it let it roll for a while. You don't want to leave a two-note um, coupling like this for too long because it does create angst. Whether they know it or not, um, you know, in their tummies, this is pretty, but there's a little bit of angst there. Um, so you want to release that, let it go. You know, you can then go back to home, or you can come down here to your to your second note. This is one, two, three, four, five. start feeling the progression to kind of ease them into what the band is going to kind of launch into next. Um, I'm going to start off with the really subtle stuff and I'm going to keep it really slow, um, but I'm still going to have some movement. Now instead of, let's say you, the chord progression that you're going for is like a one, four, five, four kind of song. So what I'm talking about is a song that moves from D to G to A and then back to, to G before it kind of cycles around again. All right, very common chord progression. Again, instead of like taking this and doing a D chord and then coming up here and doing a G chord, that is not subtle, all right? What we wanna do is use those inversions, all right? We just wanna move one note at a time, never more than one note. So there's my G chord, okay? It just looks a little different because it's turned on its head, but it's the same notes mathematically, okay? All right, and then if I wanna do an A, I'm going to come back up here, but an A, if you spell it out, has an A, a C sharp, and an E. So I am going to move my bass note, and you can feel that movement. That's what they're going to feel the most is whatever's in the bass. But then in order just to go back to um, my one chord, my home bass, I'm going to go back to this. All right? Um, if you don't really... Uh, to go through a progression, um, then basically you can take your one and your five, and then you just hang out on any of these three notes, but the, the trick is just to kind of subtly move. Um, listen to what they're praying, listen to what they're saying. When he's just, you know, said something that sinks in with you, that really hits home, give them some movement. Um, they're going to they're gonna want to feel that movement, but again, not too much. Sometimes um, I will go up to the sixth note in the scale. So one, one two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, but if you do that, um, I don't. I don't usually hang out there long. You have to resolve back to home base pretty quickly. I hope this has been helpful. Um, we have a few more videos um, coming up. If you feel like um, you needed something explained a little bit more, um, we're also going to cover how to transpose and um, some more examples of how to um, begin with pads and move into um, a worship set.